Welcome to another episode of BRAPCAST. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to BRAPCAST. Today, we've got Tony Crockwell Lawrence from Bermuda. How you doing, Tony? Awesome. And yourself? Very good, as always. So, can you tell us uh, where you're from and a little bit about it? Okay, well... I'm from Bermuda, which is the world's second most uh, isolated island, and uh, right out here in the middle of nowhere in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, it's kind of very unusual because we're about in the same latitude as Cape Hatteras in North Carolina, and we have a weird climate. We're not in the Caribbean, and we don't have a tropical climate, but we don't have the winter climate you have there. It's uh, We never get snow, and it never gets too hot. It's, but it gets cold. We had a lot of dampness. Like today, it's, it's pretty chilly here. It's about 19 degrees C, which is cool for us. The other day it was 13 C, which is very cold for us. But it doesn't normally get much above 26, 28, 30 C sort of max. It's a pretty nice place to live. Very temperate, that- as we would say. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like we don't have huge fluctuations in temperature, but uh, we feel every degree. I mean, I just came back from Europe, you know, I was hanging out four degrees, zero degrees, six degrees. And I was okay with that. In Bermuda, we feel every degree though. I'm still wearing the same clothes I was wearing in France. Wow. I think yesterday here it was negative 5C or so. Well, it was 19 here yesterday. <laughs> um, oh, a little bit more about Bermuda. We got more of everything per capita. More beaches, more reefs, more everything. For a quick idea on the island, this will relate. Some of this will relate back to mopeds too. It's uh, basically we're about 35 square kilometers. The top speed on our roads is 35 kilometers per hour, but the traffic moves at 50 kilometers per hour per hour. Of course, everyone speeds, and uh, it's full of small, curvy sort of roads, no highways, nothing. It's perfect, perfect there for mopeds and. These days, I have a growing interest in electric vehicles with a perfect venue for that as well. And it's beautiful. And wow. That sounds like a perfect place for mopeds. Mm-hmm. It, it really is. And I'm sadly the mopeds are disappearing, except old guys like me uh, are getting them and restoring them uh, because that's the bike of our youth. Scooters are everywhere here. And we probably have, you know, we have 8,000 rental scooters on the island for tourists, and plus all the locals have a couple of them. I have two right now. Yep, scooters seem to be taking over. Yeah, but I, I don't have a passion for scooters. I have a passion for mopeds. Maybe that's something uh, you need to get started. Roll that back. Well, you, you know, well the last, the last couple of mopeds I had were actually Maxi Pooks. And I actually gave them away because I was sitting on them for too long and I just didn't have time to deal with them. And I didn't want them to to kind of just fade away and just not have any love. And I have a friend of mine who loves pooks. So I gave him both of my maxi pooks. And I also have another friend who was a head mechanic for the biggest rental company out. And when they phased out the pooks, I got all the last OEM parts. So I had all the new pistons and carburetors. So I just gave him my whole kit and caboodle because I knew he would do good things with them. And sometimes I'm sad I did, but the truth is I wouldn't have done anything with them. Better to give them, put them in good hands than, than waste them, basically. That makes sense. Give them to somebody who's going to ride them around and, and give some exposure to the to the bikes. Well, it's not so much about exposure. The guy's about my age, and like I'm 62. And I was born in 1962. I'm about to be 56. So I grew up in the age of mopeds. And he's about my age, and he treats him with love. He modifies some, some he restores to original condition. Like, you know, he, he does a lot of things with them. And I had wheels, and, you know, I had all the, the bits that you couldn't get, basically, because we're a long way from Europe. But the internet Definitely. makes things easier now. Um, did, I, did I answer that question? I, I don't know. I started rambling. I have a tendency to do that. No, you went right into the next question, what the scene is like. So you, that's, that's really good. Um well, I sent Re- Rebel a couple of contacts on Facebook with two of the groups of Bermuda, custom, Bermuda's custom cars and, and motorcycles, and uh, I forgot the other one. But he has the contacts. I can look it up. But uh, 
I'll, I'll ask him about that. Yeah. You know, it's, but they cover a lot of things because there's various motorcycles that are coming in and out of fad here. Like when I first got into mopeds, I got in right after, before then, the most popular mopeds in the island was a Cyrus, which had a Sax engine. And we were limited to one speed, so they had two speeds and three speed Cyruses with a shift clutch, a clutch and shift on the, uh, on the left hand side, like a Vespa. And, you know, so the single speeds, but we quickly learned how to modify them to make three speeds. And it was a simple modification. But when the grease stopped you, we quickly unmodified. Of course, everyone knew about it, but we also had um, Zondaps, we had Chryslers. But when I had my Mobilette, the first one I had was an AB7 uh, Blue. And uh, I would have given my arm for gears because I already had a 250cc arm, uh, 250 Suzuki motocross bike. And I also had a Husqvarna one. And I raced motocross. Growing up in the era I did, you could not ride a moped on the road legally until you were 16. And so we all had to take the bus to school. And every guy in the island was a motorhead because the day you turned 16, you got your moped license. You didn't have to take the bus to school. It was a sense of freedom. And naturally, if you have two guys with two mopeds, you want your moped to be faster than your friend's moped. And so we raced them doing what 16-year-olds normally do. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of the start. And, and I was familiar with much faster bikes as well. And also, we had a limit back then of 100cc was the maximum engine you could have. So when you were 18, you could get your big bike license, and then you were mad. Wow, and it sounds like you just kept going from there. Yeah, and right now the limit is 150 cc's because they've been switching from two strokes to four strokes for cleaner emissions. And, you know, I've, I've had several four strokes and you know, I have no problem with them, but they don't really excite me in the same way as two strokes do. I can appreciate that. It's, you know, and like I said, the moped scene here is mostly guys of my age. I don't see kids doing it. Like my oldest son is 15. So at 16 next year, he'll be able to get a 50 cc license. I'd love to build him a moped. I'm not sure he'll want it, though. He's part of the Xbox generation. But knowing my son, he'll be interested. I mean, I would love to build him one. Right. I imagine most of his friends are just getting scooters since they're so readily available. Yes, and they're expensive here. Like, you know, generally a new 50cc scooter costs you about $3,500. And our dollar is equal to the American dollar. They're actually on par. And we use them interchangeably in the island. But it's like, you know, I'm not a rich guy, you know, so if he wants a scooter, I'll get him a scooter. We can rebuild scooters. We, we can do all that type of stuff, you know. I mean, you know, since he races mountain bikes and things like that, it should be an easy switch to him. In that case, definitely. He's already got the race and bug. Yeah, he does have that. <laughs> Triathlons and all that type of stuff. But uh, it's... Uh, but yeah, like I said, I would love it. Yeah, I'd love him to have a classic moped. But I'm not sure whether that would make him the laughing stock at school or the cool guy. I don't know. Well, you would know within a week. <laughs> That's for sure. When I find the moped parked outside my door. Yep, exactly. But like I said, young kids aren't riding mopeds here. It's mostly older guys. It's so uh, it's just. Uh, and escape to our youth in Bermuda. Even our cars are limited. And like, there's no Porsches here or anything like that. And so you know, when you get about my age, most guys want a little red sports car. We want a moped. That is not unheard of here as well. Yeah, well, me and Rebel Yogi seem to have that sort of thing. We have that vibe. Might turn them on to some other Bermuda channels because we also race antique outboard engines and things like that as well. Wow, just anything you guys can race, you do. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> but I mean, it's kind of a testosterone or anything. You don't usually see girls doing that type of activity. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Unless their boyfriend or husband is into it, then then there's and a little he, bit. And it can cause some friction at times. And now every one of the gas scats and everyone on Ladies of Moped Army are like burning my page down. As soon as yeah. they hear that. You know, Moped Army was actually the first place that I that I located on the internet because I've searched every type of, you know, sort of internet site, you know. That's what I do in sleepless nights. And it's, uh, 
funny. I just didn't enjoy reading their forums. And like in your one in particular, it's like a you had a an affiliation with French mopeds in particular. Being part French, sometimes I get nationalistic about it. But I like the Rallies and Patawas, and I like them all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Definitely. But I have a, I have a particular love for mobilettes and Moto Bikini. And I have taken on Moto Bikini as my main bike, my my main manufacturer. I've got uh, four in the house right now. Uh, cool. Are you married? <laughs> my my fiance lives here with me as well, and he is trying not to trying not to get overwhelmed with all of the bike stuff going on. I think he's a lucky guy. Most of us would dream of someone who has their own collection of mopeds. Oh, geez. It's it's the exact opposite for him. He wishes I'd just give up on this whole thing. But he does come out riding with me, and he has his own bike that I maintain. <laughs> that is so the opposite of whatever you hear normally. Oh, definitely. Uh, and in Bermuda, it was a big thing. Like, what I would say, there was the, the clash between the Mobilette lovers and the Peugeot lovers. And, like, you know, and I've had Peugeots as well, but... Somehow I didn't like the Peugeots. The Peugeots had a better engine than the old piston port mobilettes that I had, you know, with their reed valves and case induction. But we learned how to tune our mobilettes, that, and we can make the mobilettes go faster than the Peugeots. They took over, they took off faster than we did, but the mobilettes handled better than they did. The Peugeots had better brakes, but we learned how to ride better. Shortening up the gap with experience and I'm sure uh, being such a racing area, you guys weren't going to let them get away with being faster well, than you. Well, like I said, this, this is a battle that went on all through the early 70s and up into the 80s when all of a sudden we were allowed to have geared bikes. And then we switched to Yamahas. They had a V50. With, first of all, they had a two-speed gearbox, and then we got three gears, and that changed the whole game. And then the middle bits faded away. They just weren't in the same ballpark. Definitely. But um, like I said, there were some interesting times. And there was a lot of illegal racing going on our road. And, like we had less traffic than we do now. So like we're divided into nine parishes. And sometimes you would have one whole parish race a whole nother parish. So you'd have 400 bikes on the road at the same time. On our narrow one-line roads, uh, it was a bit chaotic. And... Uh, Highly illegal, but it was kind of what we did. If you thought you had the fastest bike in the land, you had to prove it. Wow. Kind of under, underground racing. Yeah, and everybody getting into it. Well, you couldn't do it to say, but if you can imagine 400 mopeds and roads that, you know, the speed limit's 35. And, you know, if you had asked me back then, I would have told you my moped did 70 miles far. I would have been lying. <laughs> but but I, I was good for mid-50s, and this was before we could get oversized kits, and I was used to tuning my motocross bikes, and I had expansion chambers of mine that I had to make that weren't perfect before anyone else did. So my bike ran pretty well. I was never the fastest. Oh, it sounds like you were. everybody was doing well with what they had. It sounds well, like you've been doing projects for, for many years. What Do you have a favorite project? Um, well, like, you know, for the last 30-odd years, you know, since 1983, I've been, a, I made my living as a boat captain. I've had two boat, cap I've had two companies. I have a small one now. I rent boats. I run tours and things like that. You know, so I've built boats. I've, I've, I've owned, I don't know how many motorcycles I've owned, but, you know, they're all small displacement ones, so within the limits here, but, you know, as time came by, we learned how to source parts, and even though the limit would be, like, Right now, I know friends, they have 150cc bikes that are tuned up to 230, 240, you know. And the guys that like bikes will spend a huge amount of money on them. I'm not one of those guys. Back when I started, we had to make our own parts. When I started porting cylinders, <laughs> was in my garage with a file and a towel shoved down the middle, picking it up a millimeter, testing it out, then going back, picking it up a millimeter, finding out that was too much, going back and doing it again with a new cylinder. Everything was trial and error. You didn't happen to write any of that down, did you? I know um, porting stock cylinders and stuff is kind of a lost art. Um, nah, but I, I spent many a night in my garage with my cylinder and a towel shoved in the middle and a file 
no real measurements, just doing it by eye. Like, and I used to keep the trash, so those the ones that didn't work. One of the ways I had a lot of parts is all the moped rentals in Bermuda, because tourists in Bermuda still can't rent a car. You can rent a 50cc scooter, but no cars for rent here. But when they were renting mobilettes and Peugeots, all the cycle liveries had a huge amount of these things, and they would crash them or they'd get old, and they would sell them for like 50 bucks. So the ones that were old, they would just send them to the dump. And me and my friends used to go to the dump and pick up all the old mopeds, you know, strip engines off, take wheels off, anything that was good, because it was going to be crushed and compacted. And, you know, it wasn't against the law or anything. So I ended up with a huge collection of, you know, from the round block mobilettes, you know, to, you know, the letter, you know, back then they used to be lettered from A to, I can't remember the top letter, but I had a variety of every single one of them. With all the cams, I had different varieties of cams. So I experimented using round blocks or straight parts. And we used to have what we call five-year parts. Uh, they're not really five-year, but they're the ones that came off the mopeds with gears and things like that. We never had those ones in Bermuda. But we used to use the parts in our bikes. And they had a higher compression heads and and no decompression valve. But we used to take our heads, I used to sit there with a plate of glass and sandpaper, just slowly like grinding away, trying to get more compression in my engine. Wow, hand tools and making your own parts. I'm I'm sure there is I uh, I'm sure you're a hero to a couple of couple of no, people no. over here. Well, every guy in Bermuda did that back then. Hey, you had to. <laughs> every, every day going to high school was a race. And every day coming from high school was a race. You know, we're 16. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. And if your bike had like half of a mile power and you one of your friends, then you were cool. You were king for a day. And, uh, and like I said, I experimented. Like now they have launches and things because being half French, I spent a lot of time in France. I saw the moped racing scene there and it was incredible. I never knew things about like launchers. Guys in the Peugeots, for instance, they had their... Um, the variator stuff and the guys would hold the engine forward with one foot to keep it in the lower sort of ratio until they picked up speed and most of the guys in bermuda didn't like the variated mopeds because they used to get into hot uh, they would switch too early and i was one of the few that ran one most of the guys here ran the non-variated type and they would change the sprockets i mean normally non-variated would come with 1144 sprockets here and they would switch to 1336 and you know, they would cut the cut shoes down, things would slip until they got a long hill to get down, and then they would go. I used a variated one, but before I heard about launchers, I welded a little tab to the front of my engine, had a, uh, another brake lever on the front side, but it's my left brake, and I could hold the engine in the position I wanted to until I, I could release it whenever I wanted. So I ran a variated engine, which I think came with 1254 sprockets. I ran mine 1144. And it worked out pretty well. I used to take off almost as fast as the Pujos, and, and the guys run the 1336 pockets could never catch me. And in Bermuda, it's full of corners, so it's like a drag race. There's very few long straight roads. Wow, so acceleration is is key for things like that. Well, the thing is, the, the Pujos had the acceleration and the brakes, well, compared to us back then. And, and, and what we had was better handling. The bike had a more planted feel. And, and what we just tried to do is not slow down once you got your bike going because we know our roads we know every corner we know where all the potholes are we know where the sand patches are and once you got going you just didn't slow up you had a big hill coming up and you just kept going <laughs> bunch of crazy kids uh, it was that for sure you couldn't do that now there's too much traffic on the road it's not like people don't have races here you know guys will be guys but it's a different scene right now geez you didn't have to make your own parts you can buy whatever you needed and uh, you know, if you had the budget, you know, if you had a moped, you could get yourself a 70cc kit or an 80cc kit. That didn't exist in my time. Well, maybe it existed, but we had no access to it. Right. I'm not sure if anyone was doing that sort of thing yet or not. I didn't know. Like, it, yeah, I knew probably around the 80s, you know, when I was in France, I started finding out information about that. But I never really kind of dove into that. And even though I'm interested, like when I was talking to Rebel, he says he likes 50 cc's and I do too. But, I, you know, all I want right now is just kind of a stock moped. I don't need to go fast. I don't want to ride it every day. It'll be my Sunday ride. My scooter is my transportation. I don't have a car, so it's my bus. You know, I have a big top box and I can carry a lot of stuff on it. But like, to me, it's music to my ears when I hear Mobile Egg come down the road because I know the sound from, you know, I can hear them coming. You know? Isn't that strange how you can tell 
I know I can I can tell as well between the scooters and the mopeds and the uh, the French ones. I remember when I got mine, my the first day I got that was I've only had two new motorcycles in my entire life because you know, I usually buy cheap and I just rebuild them. And my first one was a Mobilette, and with my optimistic speedo, it would get about forty-five kilometers per hour. That was that was all I could get going downhill. That changed pretty rapidly, switching carbs and things, and you know freeing it all up. I've broken crankshafts because I managed to get them revving much higher than they were supposed to. Oh, jeez. Uh, the long history with them. I had probably. In my garage when I went to college, I had my Husqvarna 125, I had my Suzuki 250, and a host of street bikes. And I had several Hondas, lots of Suzuki 100s, and I had at least six running mobilettes, plus enough spares and frames and things to build maybe another five or six with plenty of parts left over. I went to college and my mom got rid of my whole collection. She couldn't wait for me to get out of the house. That breaks my heart. My heart's still broken 30 years later. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, and a lot of the parts, a lot of the parts were some quite rare old mobile parts too. Oh gosh. Oh, don't tell me that. Well, I'm still not talking to her. Aw. Um. With uh, it sounds like you've had some frustrations. Have do you have any frustrating projects that come to mind? That still stick in your head? Uh, I'm just trying to think. You know, I was frustrated when I didn't know how to do things, so I didn't have the tools to do things that I didn't know how to do. But over the years, I've acquired friends that have the tools and things, and they have the knowledge of this that it supersedes mine. Like, but back then, I don't have any really frustrating projects. Uh, yeah, every, everything was an adventure. I guess alternatively to that, what has been your most rewarding project? Moped wise? Yeah. Moped wise was getting my variated old mobilette. And well, I had the same frame, but I changed the engine. Getting it to run the way I did, you know, we had just like, and then in Bermuda, I guess you would call them sleepers in the US. Yeah. It's like, you know, like most of the guys in my era spent all their money in chrome parts and things and stuff, and they would buy whatever off the shelf parts they could do. And I used to enjoy making mine where everybody else's mobile had a nice, pristine sort of paint job. You saw one of my friends' mobile that I posted, a couple of them, and they would spend all their money in paint jobs. And I used to purposely, my mobile when I painted it was just played flat back. If you looked at the engine, you couldn't see anything. I kept it as ordinary looking as possible. And used to surprise people. And that was my secret sort of little pleasure, you know, just like, hmm, you guys have all the flashy parts. You have a bigger budget than me, but you can't catch me. All um, go, no show. Yeah. Well, they got, they went too, but I was all go, no show at all. Are you working on anything now? No, I'm not right now. It's uh, like I said, I've just come back from four months in Europe. We've had terrible weather in Bermuda. It's like, and I've been home since the 20th of February. Yesterday was beautiful, but we have a storm coming in tonight. We got 50 knots of wind coming, and then right after that, all that stuff that's hitting the northeast in the U.S. is going to get us in two or three days later. So we just had storm after storm. So I'm just trying to get my boat back into, in my my boats back into service, so I can actually make a living for a while after five months and not working. And I'm not currently involved in any active mo sort of motorcycle project at all, and so. I keep on thinking I should do, but space and time and budget limitations are one of those things. So. You just get busy sometimes. Yeah, it's, but you know, now after being divorced and things like that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm having more time but less budget. Right. And, less space. and uh, like I said, we'll see. Like when I was in France this winter, I was going to buy a mobilette, but you know, it was just a bad time for my family. And they're harder to find in France than you would think. You can look up in the bone coin, but, you know, France is pretty big. Like in my neighborhood, I saw maybe one Peugeot. Everything else is all scooters. You can still find parts if I go to a bigger city, you know, maybe 20 kilometers away. But it wasn't that much of a priority. It was more of a priority to spend time with my dad than messing around with stuff like that. Definitely. Um, did you have anyone you wanted to uh give a shout out to or any companies you wanted to mention over there 
in Bermuda? Yeah. Nah, nobody else. No, well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Uh, well, let's see. Steve Furtado, like he was like, I posted pictures of his bike. I didn't ask his permission. They were just on one of our pages. But, you know, to all the Bermuda guys that, that are still into mopeds and old motorcycles in particular, like, keep it up, guys. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything more that I should say, Ashley. Um, no, that's, a, that's, that's good. If you, if that's what you got, um, yeah. uh, did you have anything I, else at all you wanted to talk about? Um, I can talk about anything. What do you guess? I, yeah, I run tours for ages, you know, I, I talk for a living. <laughs> so. I, I know sometimes something will pop into people's heads while they're, while we're recording and they've got something for to throw in at the end. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking, you know, when I was filling out your sheet, because sorry about the confusion, because Rebel said, let me introduce you to Ashley. And she does this Brad Borg broadcast. And I didn't really know what it was. And he's like, then he sends me a list of the questions that you're probably going to ask me. So I was like, okay, I can do that. And then I didn't know whether I was waiting for a call or we would, we would chat and do anything. So I was waiting and waiting. So I said, oh, maybe he doesn't mean today, you know? And I was like, and that's where it went. Sorry about the miscommunication. That's that's text for you, right? Yep. No problem. No problem at all. Any other questions for me that I can maybe help you out with? Um, I think we've kind of hit everything. Well, you know what you might do is, you know, because like you have a great site. And like I said, most of the people that are into mopeds here are into Pujos and Mobilettes. You know, like you... You don't see very much else. I got a friend who's got a Velo Solex amongst his quest. There's a couple of Cyruses, the odd Zundap hanging around, but it's mostly um, Mobilettes and Pujos. So the two sites that I gave to um, uh, Rebel Novi, um, maybe you can reach out to the admin for those guys here. And, and I'm sure some of the guys know about you already, but maybe just make the admin aware of that you exist. And especially someone like Rebel Novi, the guys here that do it are really pretty good at it, but Rebel Rebel Moby just seems like an inexhaustible supply of information. I love the way he actually gives advice and information from his experience to people that are asking questions. Yeah. And so I, I read everything that he uh, that he that he posts. And I know you have several guys like Greg Goki and does awesome things too. These are just names that come to the top of my head. Yep, I uh, Rebel and I have spent a lot of quality time on the internet together. He is an, an, a bottomless. Everything French, <laughs> but he, as I found out the other night, he knows a lot more than, than just mopeds. Yeah, definitely. He sent me a couple of uh, radios before that I, I play with. Well, I, I just like anything that you can tinker with. Like in today's throwaway age, I kind of hate that, you know. Definitely. It's like, you know, I like taking things apart and putting them back together and, some, and that type of stuff. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of a dying art sort of thing. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much for being on tonight and letting us know all about Bermuda and the moped scene down there, past and present. Tony, it was great to have you on. This has been another episode of BRAPCAST. I'm your host, Ashley Ackley, and tonight we were joined by Tony Crockwell from Bermuda. Do you have a crew, shop, or super red mopeder you would like featured on our show? Tell us all about it on Facebook at BRAPCAST. Find our other episodes on SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, and the Google Play Store. Until next time, stay happy and stay brappy.